Well, hello everyone. This is a 2001 S10, and I'm going to show you what it sounds like sometimes when it doesn't start, and I'm going to show you how to fix it. So let me go over here and turn the key, and again, we'll let you listen to it. And there you go, you can hear that. It sounds like it's almost out of time. Uh, a lot of people think, well, maybe it jumped time. Uh, maybe the distributor uh, jumped time, you know, or the time and chain jump. Uh, I mean, all these things, people are replacing, uh, uh, they're tearing the engine apart and they can't figure it out. They think their fuel injectors are bad. Uh, but I'm gonna show you what it is, pretty simple fix. So, so uh, let's get to it. And as you can see, it's been a little wet today, and this problem happens a lot, especially if we get a little bit of moisture. The temperature's in the 40s today, and uh, it's been damp, and also sometimes on cold mornings when it's uh, a little damp, what we gotta do, we gotta get in here and take this distributor off, and what's happening, the distributor is pretty much wore out, and when that rotor spins, that little bit of moisture that sometimes uh, gets inside this rotor, the condensation, it doesn't take much. I mean, you, sometimes you can't even see, it just takes a slight about amount of moisture, and when that rotor spins, and what happens, it jumps fire in between these spark plugs here and it causes that engine to sort of backfire and jump like you uh, heard when I was cranking it over. So first thing we've got to do is go ahead and take off this uh, rotor cap here, actually the distributor, and get in there and clean out and take a cloth and dry it out a little bit. And I've got some starting fluid and we'll get in here and do that and we'll uh, clean it up and dry it out and see if this thing will start up. First thing we got to do, we got to take the rotor cap off. It is a T20, one of these little guys here, so make sure you have one of those, a little tiny socket. And this rotor cap, like I said, is sitting back there. You've got one bolt sitting right there. Uh, when you put your uh, socket on there, put your thumb down on your finger, and just in case it tries to fall out, because sometimes they like to come out. And we got one on the far back there, so we'll go ahead and take those out. Next thing you want to do is slide these wires off here. You got three plug wires on this side, and mine are, felt, are kind of fed in here by a wiring harness, a little clip, so uh, I know exactly how they go back on and they won't be an issue. And you got three wires on this side and a plug wire. I'll simply just go ahead and pull this plug wire off here on this side, right there, and uh, kind of pull it out of the way. Then we can usually pull this, uh, this cap up out of here enough to go ahead and clean it. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but I'm going to go ahead and pull this cap out of there. i got my socket back there. And I've actually got the bolts loose where this cap now should just lift up out of there like this. And there we go. And you can see my my, my bolts are still on there, which uh, I'm going to go ahead and slide them off now. There's one. Kind of stick them, probably just uh, stick them in my pocket here or off the side so I don't lose them. And I, there's one in the back. Take your time, make sure you get it out. Because you don't want to lose these guys, you drop them, and uh, they're hard to sometimes find. And now I'll just simply take the uh, coil wire off, put it off the side, and there's our rotor cap. And now we can pull it up out of here. And as you can see, the rotor cap, it's in pretty bad shape. It's got a lot of corrosion. And you can see just a little bit of moisture in there. I don't know if you can see it, but I know what to look for. And uh, actually, if I take my finger and wipe right there, see that fingerprint there I just did? <laughs> if I could do that one more time, actually, I'll put my finger in the middle, the cap. And you can see right there, I just wiped a little bit of moisture off. So what we gotta do, we gotta go ahead and clean this out. Now, it's okay to leave those three plug wires on because you can get this out of there. And there's the rotor cap right there and like I said it's in pretty bad shape so we're going to do our best to clean them up and uh, make it run. All right now for the job I've got a can just uh, I got a can of just regular old starting fluid I got a dry rag and a little bit of piece of a very fine sandpaper I want to go in there and kind of clean up a little bit so let's go ahead and start cleaning up this cap. Just kind of clean around a little bit there and make sure you don't have any fire or any sparks because this stuff is highly flammable. Try not to inhale any of it, <laughs> like I just did. 
Now we want to get in here and clean this out really good. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and order a new rotor end cap over the uh, next couple days. And we're going to go ahead and put this in. But for now, we're going to go ahead and clean this out real good so we can at least drive it until the parts get here. And if this is happening to you before you go replacing any parts on your vehicle, don't go replacing distributor caps, pulling your distributor out. Don't go uh, replacing water uh, coolant temperature sensors, all this crazy stuff. Do this first because I see this happening 99% of the time. And I don't know if you can see in there, let me grab the camera, but uh, we got it pretty clean. So I'm gonna, the well, next thing I'm gonna do now is take my little bit of sandpaper that I got here, just go in here and kind of lightly sand down the tip here and clean the little bit of corrosion that's off on there. Then we'll go down here and we'll hit the uh, rotor cap. We'll pop it off real quick. All right, now we've taken our little screws out and you will have to have a different uh, socket for that. This is a T15 bit. And now we'll just simply go ahead and loose, uh, lift up the rotor cap and there it is. And it's pretty dirty, so we'll clean it out. Now do not lose these little screws here. You lose those, you're gonna have a bad day. So we'll put those off to the side and uh, we'll go ahead and clean this up and also you can see the bottom of the cap is a little dirty we'll we'll hit it with some cleaner there and wipe it off then we'll just simply put everything back together and see if it starts now if you know anything about temperature and dew point anytime we get a temperature and dew point pretty close you get visible moisture clouds and so forth and that's what we have today uh, i live in a mountainous area in the Appalachians and it gets uh, pretty um, humid a lot and I see this issue a lot of times with vehicles where they get moisture in the distributor and it will not start. The problem is with this vehicle uh, it's kind of a these I just this I want to say is the problem with this vehicle is sort of a, uh, a design defect uh, they don't have a rubber seal around the bottom of this cap to keep, keep out any visible moisture they just have the cap bolted down on the uh, rotor there and uh, distributor and it's impossible to keep the moisture out. So, uh, like I said, we're just about done. Let me go ahead and clean this up and we'll stick it back together. And if it starts, this is probably more likely your problem. Okay, now the cap is back on. I mean, not the cap, well, the, uh, the rotor cap is back on anyway. Now we go ahead and verify we got everything cleaned and wiped out really good. And we'll go ahead and put the uh, cap back on. I like using starting fluid because it dries really fast and uh, you don't have to do much wiping. So it really helps out. And now we'll go ahead and swap uh, sockets. We'll get the T20 and go ahead and put the cap back on and bolt it down. Now before you go ahead and bolt the stripper cap on, there's one very important step you need to do to verify that you didn't do all this work for nothing and this also will help you diagnose your starting problem. Make sure that your rotor is pointing to the little number six on the cap. I don't think you're going to be able to see it down here off to the side, but there's a place. It'll either say four or six, uh, it'll either say eight or six. Make sure that rotor is pointing right at it and mine is. And also your number one plug Number one cylinder is right up here in front of the engine on the driver's side. Now, I've already pulled this out earlier uh, a couple days ago when I had a small problem with it. So I know where the timing mark is. The second way you can do it, there's a timing mark down there on the crank, and there's no way you're going to be able to see it today because I don't have a flashlight. But I can kind of see it down there. I know it's on number one, and I've got a little socket on my alternator here just to kind of help me turn this belt to turn that uh, crank down there to number one. Uh, marking there top dead center and I verified that I am in the correct time what this does this verifies that the engine did not jump time now if you do this and your rotor cap is pointing some weird direction other than that then you got timing issues either it's stripped uh, gear out on the rotor or your timing has jumped so uh, just so you know uh, that's something you really need to check out and I may do a video on that later, but for now, we're just gonna go ahead and see if this takes care of the problem for now to get you by. So now let's go ahead and put this cap back on. All right, the rotor cap is bolted back on. Make sure you don't strip those bolts. I got my coil wire back on. Now I simply go ahead and hook up the three uh, plug wires on this side. And on this distributor cap, there are numbers for the firing order and I'll show you those here in a second and I can verify all three of those are in the right place just like how I tuck them off and on the cap here if you look closely there are numbers right there you can see that is your firing number and mine there uh, I believe if I can see it there's three this is number one right here now you gotta be careful if you think this is number one here 
And this is where the rotor cap should be pointing? No, you gotta follow this here, this little indentation. Number one is actually over here, so it's very confusing sometimes. You can get these uh, messed up, but you gotta follow this. This is where number one is, but you can see the numbers there. Uh, three, one, five, looks like two, four, and six. So all that's back together, so now all we gotta do is go ahead and uh, put our tools off to the side here, and let's see if it'll start up. All right, everything's back together, so now we're gonna go ahead and see if it starts up. Okay, we still have issues. All right, well, that's a good thing. Now, right now, what we've done, we've gone ahead and uh, verified that it's getting timing. We know it's getting spark. Uh, we checked the timing, I should say. We know it's getting spark. Also, we know it's getting fuel because I can hear it uh, kind of backfiring, kind of that poof sound. So uh, that's good. We know that's okay. So we can rule out the timing system and the... Um, uh, the the electrical part that is uh, the distributor and the coil is getting fire so we're okay there so now what we've got to do is go ahead and move inside uh, it, it looks like more than likely it is going to be electrical uh, related to a sensor so then we'll go ahead and get the obd2 reader and we'll hook it up to the car and see if we get any codes now at this point all right now we're getting somewhere the uh vehicle did throw a code i got a po128 which is a coolant temperature sensor um we're gonna have to go out here and see what's going on and uh Apparently just go buy one and stick it in. So well, we didn't have this code the other day when we we're having this problem, but now we got the code. So now we're getting somewhere. So let's go out and check that out. All right, so I went out and got a new sensor, $18. We'll stick it in. And what you gotta do now is take out this air cleaner, get it off the side. I just disconnect the uh, water hose here, the, inner, the uh, upper radiator hose and just do it off to the side. And you got this wiring harness here, it's annoying. You gotta kind of wiggle around it. But the sensor on this um, model is right there. Let me zoom in. That is the temperature sensor, it's on the side of the head. So what you gotta do is get an 18 millimeter deep well socket and kind of get it here at an angle and pop it out. Now, you're supposed to drain the radiator fluid out of this and all that, but I'm gonna switch it around real fast. I'm probably gonna lose a little fluid, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I wanna go ahead and see if this thing's gonna uh, run. So what we gotta do is go ahead and take it out, and I've got my socket here set up, and I'm gonna have to set the camera down, get my hand in there, take that one out, and we'll stick the new one in here real quick, and we'll see if that take care, takes care of the problem. You have to get a little bit of silicone put in there. I've got some silicone over there in my uh, back of the vehicle. We'll stick some silicone on there, and stick it in there, and we'll hook it up, and hopefully it'll start up. Anyway, this is the wire that goes on the uh, temperature sensor. Kind of throw it off to the side. And now we're ready to go ahead and pull that out of there. All right, you know what? I decided not to replace the uh, uh, the uh, water temperature sensor because what I did, since the wire was already off here, I just hooked it into the wire and grounded it and see if it would start. Didn't make a bit of difference. It still puffed and you know sputtered, didn't want to run. So uh, that saved me a lot of time. So what I decided to do was go ahead and pull this plug out here. The number one is up here on the front on the driver's, uh, see driver's side, the very front of the engine. Got the plug out, I got a screwdriver in the cylinder down there. I got me a ratchet there on the pulley and I just turned it around until that, right there, with one hand and I turned it with the other one over there. You can do it pretty easy. I, obviously I can't do it with the camera here in my hand. And I waited, that screwdriver came all the way up to the tip top and I did it a couple times, just back and forth and that cylinder is all the way up, that's number one. Don't know if it's a compression or the uh, exhaust stroke, but it doesn't matter. Your rotor's gonna point either the opposite or that way. Uh, and it's right on number one cylinder there. It's pointed right at number six. I don't know if you can see that. So the vehicle's in time. So our vehicle's in time, we've got spark, we're getting gas. So something is interfering with the uh, spark uh, of this uh, engine when it's turning over. Something is shorting out the plugs, uh, the coil pack or something here is really weird. So uh, this is what it's all about. We'll just keep working away until we get it uh, cranked away. But yes, it is in time. I mean, it is, there's no problem here with the timing on it or anything. So, uh, and there's the server is back off. I mean, the, uh, yeah, the distributor is off. And there is the rotor button cap, and it's pointing right on number six. Actually, if I get my light here, there we go. 
Let me zoom in a little bit. And you can see right there, six, it's right on where it should be. So, we'll just uh, keep uh, working away here. We'll figure it out sooner or later. And I'm sure I'm not the only person that's having this problem with this vehicle. What's all about? Uh, it's all about uh, just process of elimination. So, uh, let me figure out what we need to do here next. A little update, we got it running. It turned out to be the distributor cap, put another one on it. It's running just like it should. Amazing. So if you have this problem, check this uh, cap first. If you hear that popping when you're trying to start it, these uh, go bad. Apparently, if you look at this, you see nothing wrong with it. So we got a new one on there. It's running perfect. So uh, hopefully this will be the tip for you to get yours started. And let me show you the other uh, distributor that we took out. The uh, distributor that we took out. Initially, we thought maybe this uh, sensor right there was bad. As you can see, if I spin this, there's a sensor here that has a plug in it. And uh, it turned out it was okay the whole time. The cap, I couldn't believe the cap was shorting out, causing the vehicle to do that. Of course, it's raining now. I'm over here where it's kind of dry. So I thought I would just kind of make a video, pass this along. So if you have the uh, same issue, it's starting like that, popping through the intake and acts like it's vapor locking, check your distributor cap because apparently they can just go bad out of the blue and uh, there's a lot of forums and write-ups on them. So there we go, let's walk over here. And, and by the way, here's the cap, it has some corrosion on it. You can see it's, you know, not in the world's best shape, but apparently it's bad. So walk over here one more time and look at it, give you a scent, listen to it. While the rain falls. like new again so there you go any likes or comments let me know and i'll try to answer any questions that you have so uh take care until next time i need to grab an umbrella <laughs> later